Vancouver Transit Centre is a major trolley bus depot, as well as a regular bus depot and training centre in South Vancouver, and since I'm in Vancouver, I got together with the awesome folks from the TransLink social media team for an incredible day of checking out the trolleys, the amazing equipment and facilities used to keep transit running, and even a bus simulator. Yes, you will get to see me extremely stressed driving a fake bus if you watch until the end. Without further ado, come along with me on my adventure. We arrived at the Vancouver Transit Center nice and early to the whir of various buses passing into and out of the facility, which first opened in 2006, and as you can tell, is really quite nice. Our first stop was the bus maintenance part of the Transit Center building, consisting of a huge long open space with bays for various buses to come in and receive maintenance. Despite the space being full of various vehicles and equipment, it was clean and well organized. Props to the maintenance team here. Within the bus maintenance part of the Vancouver Transit Center, you can see all kinds of different vehicles being worked on, from old new flyers used for training, to an old asymmetric Nova bus, to the newer hybrid buses, some of which are even articulated. The garage has all of the equipment needed, from jacks to pits and cranes for moving heavy components and buses around to do work on them. There are of course also different parts around the shop, so that things can be repaired on the various different bus models, and wow, they have a crazy amount of parts. It really feels like a giant hardware store with rows and rows of racks with all kinds of different parts. And of course we have tires. Lots and lots of tires. As was mentioned before, VTC is also Vancouver's primary trolley bus depot, and work for them is done here on site. You might wonder how trolley buses get power when they're in the depot, and it's with little short rails which the trolley poles can connect up to to provide buses with temporary 600 volt DC power, known as pods. Buses drive in on their emergency battery that allows them to travel a short distance off wire. Some bays where buses need to move in and out more quickly feature pods that extend into regular wires, allowing the bus to roll right out of the garage. Towards the end of the building is a lot of space dedicated to keeping the buses clean, including an internal cleaning bay and bus wash, which of course has trolley wires to allow them to roll right through under overhead power. Outside, we got to see the station where fare boxes, which have been significantly simplified in recent years, are emptied as buses come into the yard. Following that came the shed where trolley buses get their shoes replaced as they return to the yard, which is mounted on electrically isolated bases and is made of non-conductive material, for obvious reasons. You can also see the old shoes laying in the bins beneath the station, where the trolleys have them replaced on a nearly daily basis. At the back of the site is the big storage yard, which mostly holds trolleys along with a mix of other buses. There's a more significant non-trolley bus storage yard at the side of the facility. Fueling those diesel and diesel hybrid buses, which TransLink is actually planning to phase out by 2050, is an on-site fueling station, where you can see they also have DEF or diesel exhaust fluid, which reduces the amount of pollution coming out of diesel vehicles significantly. We also saw a little tug, which is used for moving buses around if they can't move under their own power, sort of like with planes at an airport. Of course, the best kind of bus doesn't have any dinosaur juice on it at all, and the trolleys here are plentiful. These ones are actually getting fairly old, especially for buses, with the oldest starting to get close to 20 years, and so discussion has turned towards a replacement fleet. The new fleet would likely also be around 262 buses, as with the current one, but would probably have more articulated units to take advantage of the high capacity for popular routes around core areas of the city. At the same time, plans include using in-motion charging or IMC trolley battery hybrid buses to use the arterial trolley lines through Vancouver and Burnaby for charging before going off wire and serving areas without wires overhead, reducing the need for pure battery buses near central parts of the city. Such trolleys are already in use in different parts of the world, including Europe and Mexico as pictured. Speaking about trolleys and overhead wires, it's almost November, and that means a problem, icy trolley wires. Keeping trolley wires ice-free is important because icy trolley wires can stop buses and lead to dangerous arcing. To deal with that, TransLink and Coast Mountain Bus Company have a history of home-cooked solutions that they engineered themselves. Starting with modified decommissioned trolleys, iterating on that, and finally moving on to a current solution, a purpose-built truck carrying a tank of de-icing fluid as well as trolley poles and sprayers to coat the lines. I find it quite impressive that the folks working on the trolley network found a problem and set out to fix it themselves with an in-house solution, which even involved going and getting parts custom fabbed. The truck becomes critical even when a cold morning could have a small amount of ice forming. But getting the wires de-iced isn't simple. The truck has to run slowly to get the right amount of fluid on the wires, while at the same time, the suspension isn't as luxurious as on a standard trolley bus, and so driving along while managing the de-icing fluid application and not de-wiring is not a simple feat and requires a skilled operator. 
At the same time, TransLink has a trolleybus network with hundreds of kilometers of wires, so keeping it ice-free in the winter is a big job. There's also an internal screen in the truck that allows you to watch the pools to make sure everything's working inside, but it's a lot to manage, especially on a cold winter night. Now, after learning all about the de-icing process, we headed up to the very nice roof deck, where you can get a good view of the scale of the whole yard, as well as of planes landing at Vancouver International Airport across the river. After that came driving in the bus simulator. It's actually really interesting learning what the bus operator training process is like, and finding new ways to help people learn to drive is really important. North America currently has a bus operator shortage, but for a lot of people, it can be a really good job, with benefits and the like. The bus simulator is quite impressive. It runs on a number of computers that generate enough heat that the room needs its own air conditioner, and it has a crazy number of screens to really provide great immersion, including screens you see in your side and rearview mirrors. Outside of the simulator, an instructor can monitor things, but can also play with the weather conditions and do things like bring pedestrians and erratic drivers into the scenario to challenge your driving. Once I managed to get the very comfortable seat that actually moves as you drive to give you the sensation of movement adjusted, I got to driving and almost immediately screwed up the air brakes. Things went slightly better with the initial basic maneuvering practice done, and it was time to head out onto the roads, where I immediately clipped a pedestrian, albeit in my defense a deeply irresponsible one, really, he walked into my bus. Driving around the simulated town was also a lot of fun. Oh, okay. Sure. That's... <laughs> but I can give you rain. Oh, it, there's quite a bit of resistance on the wheel. That's yes. interesting. Okay. Wow. How, how old do you drive in snow? Uh, you know, not that well. I've drifted this, this bus. It's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> that one is going in the video. Okay. Whoa! Oh my god. got some goodness. aggressive drivers up there. Yes. Whoa! <laughs> okay. You know, I'm just riding the line here. That's not yeah. ideal. Oh, you. Okay, yeah, we... That's a little wobbly. Let go of the steering wheel for a sec. Yeah, there we go. There okay, we're... Go. Back to straight. If you ever wanted to take a bus off-road, now's the time. Oh, wow, that's... <laughs> With no sirens. Wow, okay. And you can feel it in the You seat. really can feel it. Wow, <laughs> that's impressive. Let's just turn it around right forward. here. This you're is okay. much you're more okay. stressful okay. than my ICBC drive test. Yeah. Oh, you're getting on the highway. Oh, of course. All my favorite TransLink bus routes are on the highway. Oh, and the guy is following me. He's a very aggressive driver, so that's... Oh! <laughs> he was going uh, over the speed limit, I think. That one as well. You know me in there? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's bring her to a stop. This is, uh, wow. Yeah, right, you know, an appropriate right thing. Right in the middle of the highway. Just <laughs> Yes, perfect. Wow, that's, that's something. But more seriously, this technology is really valuable. Not only do internal cameras allow the instructor to correct bad habits, but dangerous scenarios that you can't safely recreate in real life can also be trained for in here. And if an operator has been in a traumatic accident, the simulator can be a great place to get them reacquainted with the bus slowly. For someone who grew up in Vancouver, getting to go behind the scenes with TransLink was super cool, so a huge shout out to all of the folks who work at the Vancouver Transit Centre, and also again to TransLink's great social media team for making it happen. It was really special. Thanks. <laughs>